Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. Before we get started, you may see the t-shirt, Rollerball, 1975 movie, a tale of dystopian corporation, government control. Uh, very, very good movie. Um, but its star, James Kahn, passed away a couple of days ago. So he was also in The Godfather, first one. Uh, and a lot of other movies. Great actor, really liked him a lot. He's passed away, I think he was in his 80s. So I'm wearing this as a tribute to James Kahn, R.I.P. Anyway, let's talk boxing. Um, mm, DAZN. What do we make of DAZN at the moment? And Matchroom, actually. Because there's been a couple of things that have happened in recent days. One is that it was announced that um, Anthony Joshua would uh, be facing Usek in the rematch on Sky. Not on DAZN, even though he is tied to Matchroom and DAZN. Joshua, this is. Hmm. Well, a lot of people have said, oh, this is really bad for DAZN. It's bad for Matchroom. You know, what's happening with Eddie? Is he losing control even of Joshua? Well, well that would depend on whether he wins or not. Because if he, if Joshua wins, it's going to be a good thing for DAZN and for Eddie Hearn. And this is that this would be a type of this is a calculated gamble, and it would be a very crafty bit of long term business by Hearn. Because if Joshua does win, all that publicity on Sky's far reaching platform will be free publicity in a sense for Dazone and Matchroom. Because if Joshua was to win, they've done it on someone else's penny, you know. And then Joshua comes back from Sky, back to the zone and, and Matchroom, and he's had, all right, one of his greatest wins was on another another uh, platform. But think of all that, you know, that, that can be built on. Think of all the publicity that can be built on. Joshua is back. He's beat Nusek. He's revenged his second defeat. You know, he's back in the in the driving seat. And it will all be free to the zone. If he loses, different story. Because if he loses, the remnants of Joshua will be, you know, dustpanned up and chucked back at DAZN. Because he'll have lost back-to-back -back fights with Usek. Three defeats on his record now. And contractually, DAZN and Matchroom will be stuck with someone who is very much damaged goods. So it's a gamble. But it's a gamble probably that Eddie Hearn has to take at the moment because to zone we all know they were losing money hand over fist there was an injection was it at the end of last year or the start of this year of four billion another four billion dollars um it does take time a long time for any kind of new idea new concept to gather pace to become established in the mainstream it was the same with sky with satellite telly some of us myself included are old enough to remember when Sky started, the whole concept of satellite TV started, and it lost money again, hand over fist, for a long, long time. It was owned by Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch. He was taking the money that he got from his red top papers and investing it into satellite television, British satellite television, Sky. There was another one as well, because BT started one, I can't remember what it was called. And then, then they merged. Um... Britain doesn't have a monopolies commission, so they were able to do that. But money was serious, money was being lost, and Murdoch kept the whole concept afloat uh, through money from other outlets. I mean, he's a multi multi billionaire, all sorts of interests. So he could afford to lose hundreds of millions of pounds. This was 30, whatever years ago, it was well, 32 years ago. Um, because he knew long term, or he was gambling long term, that it would be okay. That he would start to make money that and sure enough it's happened sky tv far reaching all over the globe or sky all different sort of outlets all different sort of platforms for different things sky sports you know individual films and you know tv news of course and so on you know all this stuff you sometimes you've got to have extremely deep po pockets to get something to work and it's the same with the zone the zone is at that point where it's trying to become established. It's losing a lot of money. Now, having said that, at some point, you've got to start making money because you can't just carry on losing it. 
and Eddie Hearn and Matchroom. I can only imagine that in the boardrooms, questions are being asked. OK, when's, when is the corner going to be turned? We want to at least see some sort of increase, some sort of upturn. Um, and if it works out with AJ and he does beat Usyk and then comes back to the zone, that will be a massive feather in Eddie Hearn's cap. That will, I think, alleviate a lot of pressure on him. Because at the moment, things are not... They're not great for Eddie Hearn or Matthew. I, I, look, I don't know the inside details. I only know, <clears throat> I only know what I can read, and not everything is published. Um, but he, there must be. I can only imagine there must be. He must be under some sort of pressure. There's another incident that happened a day or two ago. Another thing connected to the zone and Matchroom, and that is Lawrence Acoli does not seem happy at Matchroom. I'm not on Twitter. It's a sewer. It's a digital toilet wall. I've no interest in Twitter. I think it's a load of shit. Um, I think most social media is a load of shit, to be honest with you, but that's just me. You know, if you like it, you like it. I'm not telling you what to like. But it ain't for me. But I, of course, on Twitter, there have been uh, a little bit of an exchange. There's been a little bit of an exchange between Akoli and Hearn. Akoli, from what I can gather, has received some sort of offer from Sky to move over there. And he's still contracted contracted to Matchroom and DAZN, so I think he's got one more one more fight on his contract. That's what I read anyway. You can quote me if I'm wrong. You tell me, you know, because I sometimes you read two or three things and they contradict each other, and you pick up the wrong bit of information. You know that's why if you want to know anything about anything, always read from a lot of different sources, and then you can kind of read between the lines and see what the truth is. But from what I gather, he's got one more fight with on his own, Coley. But he he tweeted something about um, Eddie Hearn being a dot dot dot. Uh, I saw that tweet. I think I saw it somewhere else on someone put it on on one of the Facebook boxing groups. And also, he's implied that Eddie is a bit of a slave master. Um, and he made a reference to Django Unchained. Great movie. Watch it if you haven't seen it. Good movie. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's horrendous, villainous uh, character in, in that film. He, I think he put a picture of, it, of of Leo's character up. So not happy, not a happy man. Now, some people will say, well, hang on a minute. Hearn's done Arcoli's brought him along, got him a world title. He's done him proud. And Arcoli's being a, you know, an ungrateful little sod. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe it is going to Arcoli's head, all this fame and success, in which case he'll be found out because people like that usually are found out sooner or later. Then. Um, but nevertheless, the fact that a current world champion and someone who you can argue is, is the best cruiserweight in the world, you can make that argument. I'll have to think about it, see if I agreed with that, but definitely he's up though. He's a world title holder. Um, he must have earned some, some pretty decent money. Hearn says that He's actually lost money on a Coley. Well, whenever a promoter says something like that, I always think, well, yeah, but did you promote them right? You agreed to pay them a certain amount of money. So what was in your mind? You say you've lost money. Why is that their fault? They're doing their bit. They're getting in the ring. What about you? Have you promoted them correctly? Or are you losing money short term again to try and make money long term? Speculate to accumulate and all that corporate speak jazz. Um... But nevertheless, for Hearn and DeZone to be in a position where they have a current world champion who they can build, someone who may turn may go to heavyweight, probably will go to heavyweight eventually, the fact that you're losing, or it looks like you're going to lose that guy, that's not a good thing. You know, that can't be a good thing. Now look, this is not a, an anti DeZone, anti Hearn, anti Matchroom video. Not at all. I don't give a fuck which promoters um, are successful and which are not. I'm a boxing fan. I want as many outlets, as many platforms as possible. And I like the concept of the zone. I really do. I think it's a terrific thing. I think it's the thing of the future, essentially. The question is, can the zone keep on going to the point where it turns over and starts to make a lot of money? And then I think once it becomes established into the mainstream, the zone, if it can hang on in there, will make a ton of money. It will become the norm. Just like Netflix, you know, a Netflix for boxing and Netflix for sport. That's what it was promoted as. 
yeah, you know, that's good. But, but they've got to hang in there. You remember Satanta? They were trying to get in on the scene. And they just couldn't maintain it. They couldn't, they couldn't stay above water and they, they end up going bust. Um, you've got to play the long game and you've got to have deep, deep pockets. I'm not so sure. Well, no. I'm not, well not, not everyone can do that. Maybe DAZN can. Maybe they can. I, don't, I hope so. I hope so. But as far as Eddie Hearn's concerned, <clears throat> and again, I don't like to personalise it with promoters because ultimately I don't care about any of them. They're just businessmen. They're multimillionaires. Why should I worry about them? Why should you worry about them? With Hearn, it is an interesting character study because, as we know, he was born into a very wealthy family. He's a very privileged guy. But his, his work ethic is absolutely exemplary. He works extremely hard. Um, <laughs> he very rarely seems to sleep. God knows what his marriage must be like. He must see his missus about once in a blue moon. Maybe that's why it survived. You know? <laughs> what about his kids? Does he see his kids often? I don't know. Anyway, the point I'm making is that Hearn was nevertheless given the ammunition, heavy duty ammunition, to turn his silver spoon into a golden one. And he did that nationally. Not necessarily internationally, but nationally. Because he had Sky's money, Sky's platform, and so on and so forth. He, there was a close relationship between Sky and Matchroom. Barry Hearn, of course, the darts are big on, and you know. So, yeah, he hit the ground running, he had the inside track, but he did well. You know, he won, he was winning that race legitimately. Then he moves over to the zone, and suddenly he's pretty much on his own, if you can call. You know, having all that amount of money from DAZN, being on your own, and yeah, he was on his own. I mean, it was, it was, it, there was less of a long term connection there, family connection. Um, Eddie's always said Matchroom is, you know, or Barry's always said it's a family business. They were talking about selling a bit of Matchroom, selling a percentage of it. But Eddie is, is, is at the point now where. If he's not on the ropes, then he's not having things his own way. And just as with a fighter, for me personally, when I watch a fighter, if, if he's a front runner, like a Mike Tyson figure, okay, you can do that for a long, long time and you can get away and you can look spectacular and you can have a highlight reel knockouts and so on and so forth. But once you're under the cosh, how do you react? Are you going to quit? Are you going to lose spirit? Are you going to lose motivation? If you lose a couple of fights, you're going to... Is that going to make you stronger in the sense that you're going to become more determined? What's going to happen? And it will be interesting to see if Eddie Hearn is a front runner. If he's a Mike Tyson type who, when pushed back, when punched back, when dragged into the trenches, essentially capitulates. Or whether he's a Muhammad Ali who can lose a fight and then come back more determined, more motivated. Um, interesting times for Hearn and his own. But I can't imagine that things behind doors are all cushy mushy for Eddie. And uh, by the way, I think the, zone, the quality of the Zones product is still really, really good. You know, the the, uh, the cards they, they put on, I, I, that's why I want them to succeed. But you've got to wonder where it's at with the Zone and with Eddie Hearn. So those are my thoughts. Leave yours below. Thank you for listening as always. Like the video, it helps the channel out if you like the video. And of course, subscribe if you're new. Please subscribe, just hit the subscribe button. I always appreciate that. Thanks for your time. We've got a bit of boxing this weekend. Chisora and Pulev, all the excitement. You never know, it might be a good one. We'll see. Anyway, speak soon. Take care, enjoy your weekend. Bye for now.